Today we are happy to announce the new patch of ECW, version 2.4. This patch is a reflection of us wanting to complete the previous patch and also to incorporate some of player feedback. This patch is full of quality of life changes as well as large changes to the campaign system. So this video will explain it all. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. Before we dive into things, I do want to say one thing real quick. This patch had a very large original plan and what we are delivering is smaller than what we originally set out to do. Now that the server is two years old, we have become more aware of the maintenance and upkeep that the server requires. Additionally, COVID has been over for a long time and we are going back to the office. So there are constraints. Making sure that we do not bite off more than we can chew is increasingly becoming a big priority for us and highlights the need for stability. With this said, let's get into it. How the map moves is now changing. This is really focusing on pulling back on a lot of information and streamlining it. This makes the campaign system much simpler, but it also makes it much easier to understand. We think this will be a good way to shake things up in 2024. The best way to understand the change is to look at the F10 campaign overview. You can see here that the scoring is different. Both sides now have 1000 points that is made up of the frontline units, depots, factories, and infrastructure. Both sides attack each other, and after two hours, a calculation happens. The side with the most health wins. If they meet the push requirement at the calculation, the side's health are compared. Then the player aircraft losses from each side are quantified. If the side who won has a higher attrition, then their push requirement goes up based on how many more losses they had versus the other side. This is to dissuade suicide attacks and to incentivize people to RTB. The push requirement is then established and then compared to the health values, and if a push is to happen then it is determined now to make this super clear let's go through an example here we see red has an advantage but their attrition is very high so the push requirement is too high they do not gain a sector in this next example blue has done a significant amount of damage and the push requirement stayed at the default value they will gain two sectors because they have doubled the push requirement if you played v1 this is very similar to before but now there is an incentive to keep attacking targets because you could potentially take more sectors at a calculation there are some changes to recon once recon troops are dropped a jtac is spawned and will laze one target continuously. Once the unit is destroyed, the JTAC will target another unit that was found in the initial recon. Which unit that's being lazed is marked by smoke. It will keep doing this until all the targets are destroyed. Smoke will appear on what the JTAC is lazing. Laser codes are present on the recon marker in F10. JTAC is on station for 30 minutes. We think this will be a neat change as it will give some variety to some weapons being used and allow for more coordination between helos and fixed wing. This is also comes at a really good time because the F4 is coming. We are also introducing a new mechanic called credit call-ins. This will allow players to use their credits to help their side. We plan to add more, but for the initial rollout, there are four call-ins. They are recon, seed, AWACS, and repair. To do a call-in, you type dash request and get your code. You will then make a F10 map marker and in all caps type recon, seed, AWACS, or repair, followed by your code. AWACS and transports will spawn from the rear of the map and fly to the hex you designated. AWACS will orbit and give vision, while transports will go to that hex and repair the SAMs and runways by removing craters at those airfields. Recon and Seed will spawn two sectors back over a friendly airfield. Recon, after flying over the hex, will RTB and then report any non-frontline targets in a hex. This includes depots, infrastructure, and factories. Seed will attack an airfield and engage the SAM sites there. If a site is pushed back too far, they will not be able to call in Recon or Seed. This system will be a major change in the campaign. We are pulling back on the starting EWR and AWACS vision on the server. You will have clear EWR pictures over your side, but almost no coverage over the enemy area. You will need to spawn AWACS to get vision. This will also help to insulate strikers as they start to hit deeper targets like infrastructure, factory, and depots. All these credit call-in planes are killable and they grant credits for taking them down. We hope to incorporate more of these in the future, like bomber ways. If you have any ideas of what else we could add, please let us know in our feedback section on the Discord. There are four main quality of life changes. One is the EWR bot format has changed, so it's cleaned up and easier to use at a glance. This was something that players requested heavily, so we went ahead and did it. Next, we have fixed the issue where airfields would not arm you because enemy infantry flipped the ownership of the airfield. Now airfields will always remain owned by the side that owns a hex. Lastly, we have changed our internal weapon templating system. 
This will change weapons based on the year of the mission. So this allows us to change the missions we have in rotation with different weapon versions. We hope that you guys like this patch. We have been really happy to see that on average, players play the server more in 2023 than they did in 2022. So we hope these changes keep the server feeling fresh for 2024. If you wanna help, then please subscribe and leave a comment on this video as this channel acts as a mouthpiece for the server. Thanks and see you online. Thank you.